Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number eight of our official series, where we watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. And as always, the server and Discord links are in the description. Also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video, so feel free to jump around if there are any that catch your eye. Today, or last weekend, we start on Friday at Ebisu School Course. Here, actually, we had some special visitation from the Swarm members themselves. And if you saw from the title of the video, today or this weekend's video is going to be focused around proximity. So a lot of my focus in general uh, throughout really this weekend was trying to improve my proximity. Here, uh, really like this track set really a big tone uh, for this weekend. It was so fun. I, I forgot how fun this track really was. Uh, it's really just really nice, has a really nice flow. This part right here, I've been working on trying not to e-break, and it looks like it's making a pretty big difference. I watched a couple clips back to back, uh, and it really looks like the train is able to approach that corner a little bit better. You really got to be pretty confident going into that corner. You'll see uh, different people are going to take it different ways, so you're going to have to adapt to whoever's in front of you. But here, we'll see if I e-break. A little bit of an e-break action, which actually pulled me off the track, as you saw. But if I would have actually uh, held that angle, held the speed, and not pulled the e-brake, I think I actually would have stayed a little bit closer on the proximity. Here's a little bit of a night view. Uh, as you guys know, we do night, day-night cycles, and I always like to show off when I can, when it makes sense. A little bit of that nighttime action has a little bit more of a... I don't, I don't want to say degenerate vibe, but definitely more of a grungy vibe, which is always fun. So here, just trying to stay with the group, making a little bit of mistakes, but trying to stay within that pocket as best as I can. Tapping Reg, making sure he's staying up there. Just kidding, it was more, mostly a mistake, but just trying to keep in pace with them. And here we switch to a really fun track you guys have probably seen before, if you've been a part of the series, Sagoya Park. Now this track is really fun, but it's also really, I guess, rewarding and also can feel bad. Let me explain. So with this track, we've talked about it again before, you really want to look for these zones. If you hit these zones correctly, they reward you. If you don't, they set you up really awkwardly for these next uh, different corners that come up throughout the, the track itself. So here I'm trying to stay as close to fresh as I can. I am having a little bit less proximity and you can see, and definitely throughout this video, if you really pay attention to my transitions, when I lose my proximity, either I make a little bit of a hesitation or I'm just late on my transition. I think I, I think when I was editing, I did a decent job of having a couple clips to kind of highlight those differences. So you'll see where I'm pretty close to the doors, I'm able to transition and stay in the door. Other times where I transition and it just looks like they're just walking away from me. Now, two things that I found out from this weekend, really thinking about this one aspect, uh, specifically when you're at a hundred percent on your throttle it does seem like you're not having the traction maybe you have more like wheel speed or not enough rpms to really push your car and i've noticed when i'm just full throttle i don't have that uh push or the stay inside of doors something to maybe think about i like to again drift in just one gear as you guys can probably see here but if you're like me if you're drifting in one gear to keep it simple Definitely think about your tune, making it a little bit longer. Uh, but really with the Swarm cars specifically, they are a grippier car. So you have to find this really, really uh, subtle balance between that grip and then not losing all that wheel speed and gripping up too much and straightening. So something interesting to, to think about in here, I think I included typically most tracks, if we've seen them before, I try to include like two runs. This one I did three, just because I wanted to show how I was trying to uh, follow Turbo here. They're making a slight mistake, but catching it up, not making it too hard for the train to stay in parallel with uh, with us as I'm recouping that proximity. But again, a little bit late, I held that outside zone a little bit too much, and then you saw Turbo instantly go forward. And you know, Turbo is really great to follow uh, in general, but I think for me to really see like, Kind of a benchmark of maybe how i'm driving and and how it's going for me but now we move on over to mihan another track we've seen a decent amount this is kind of the same thought i actually do feel like i struggle a little bit on these big entries 
really it, what it was kind of reso uh, resonating to me as I was driving and watching these back is really I need to be able to trust the car, do a, a lot, probably arguably a lot less left foot brake, and really trust the weight of the car, the grip of the car that's going to grip in, and in keeping that that momentum. I think a lot of the times I get a little bit nervous, so I push the left foot brake a little bit too hard, and then I lose procs when I don't really need to. So here, try to stay with Fresh, who's uh, behind Turbo in the lead. Try to take the same exact lines, a little bit of a bump that they're taking, just to really, uh, again, stay as close to proximity as you can. Hopefully, you can kind of see how... I feel like I was being a little bit more aggressive than normal, but I was really, really trying to work hard on those transition timings. And I think next weekend, I'm going to continue to focus on this. It's something that feels really rewarding, and it and it seems like I have a lot more to improve on. But it, the tandems and the trains just feel so much better, as long as I can avoid contact and making mistakes here. Now we're on a nighttime view of Mihan. Just trying to, again, stay in with the proximity, making a little bit of a mistake here. You can really see, I think this track is still a weak point for me on these, uh, after the big initiations, trying to make sure that I'm not over angling and uh, really following their lines and transitioning at the same time. But now we move to BHS Old Tree Drift Track. If you saw the last series, you might have noticed this is a brand new track that BHS just released officially, their 1.0 version. Shout out to BHS, this track is becoming one if it's not already one of my favorites it's just such a nice sweeping like couple chill uh skill check points and uh it just i don't know man it just feels really good this is like, probably the same feeling i feel with ebisu but a lot more high speed flowy here we go on the outside to kind of hold that uh drift angle into this big sweeper and then let's talk about uh also this guy looks great but let's talk about this proximity focus that I was trying to focus on this track. Here, it, hopefully it looks a little bit self-evident, but let's talk about it on this next run here. And let's really focus on what I'm doing and what I'm thinking. I'll try to recant as best I can. So here, trying to match their angle, not go too over angle. If I throw too much angle, they're going to lose me, especially again, turbo in the lead. He's going to go fast. He's going to go quick. Got to do your best to keep up. Here, seeing that Reg throwing a little bit more angle than I was really ready for, but able to adjust to it pretty quickly. And then this part right here, a little bit slow on the transition, but it really, and even watching it back, I feel like I was going too shallow. But then when we look at the track cam, it does feel like I'm throwing a decent amount of angle, if not in some sections a little bit more, just causing a little bit of a pullback from proximity. Here, going outside, trying to stay on Reg's door a little bit too hard. You could see him wavering because I'm tapping the rear quarter of his car or really his bumper in general, trying to keep the same line that they are. When I see this proximity gap start to develop here, you can see I take a little bit shallower line, still followable, but a little bit shallower to try to keep the train together. I really try to focus on keeping the trains together when I'm in the mid, uh, middle, mid pack of it. You can kind of make or break a train in those positions. So uh, we move now to Cam's Gamebridge. Now I have actually never driven this track. So as is customary, I'm going to show you two lead runs and two follow runs. Now, I will be really honest with you. This was not the best driving that I've ever had. Not that any driving is really the best ever, but I struggle a lot right here. You can see there's a little jump. And if you don't hit it right there, I, I think I was pretty close to the correct position. But, uh, but yeah, this is an interesting track. And let's talk about the lines really quick. So here what it seemed like most people were doing is this line right here into this entry. I was doing a little bit of e-brake as you can see. I'm not sure if that's really necessary. There's an inside clipping zone or a point you could say. Here you want to run the outside but there's a little bit of a slope so you got to be careful of not letting that car get pulled outside. Go on the inside to try to keep that momentum forward. Here you can pretty much run the full outside. You can see I pulled in a little bit of angle. Also, apologies about the track cam. It just wasn't really uh, working on the tracker for some reason. And then here again, the jump, you really have to think about what angle you want to take. And you can see right behind me, I actually did okay. And by okay, I mean I survived. But because of that angle and the weirdness that happened with the way that I took it, it kind of messed up the person behind me, right? This is a, this is a fun track, but again, like honestly, a very challenging one. Now, when I hit or have issues with tracks, I typically try to figure it out myself. 
But here's a great example of seeing someone, uh, you guys have probably seen Foul before, very consistent driver, very good driver overall. I really took advantage of seeing him run and just kind of practice. And I was following his lines and it actually helped clean up this jump spot. You can see he's kind of throwing, at least I am, I think a little bit of him as well, a lot more angle into that jump. And you got to think once you're in air, not that that's like reality, but on this track, like once you're in air, you can't make any corrections. So you got to think, how can I hit this uh, little jump spot to be in the right drift angle uh, to then just hit it? I, I think too another thing as well so you can see right there that outside bank pulling him out but as well as like you want to almost be like on the throttle it was still kind of weird for me so I, I can't give you like hard advice here but you basically want to be off the jump already in the throttle i think every time i hit this jump i was a little bit too late we'll see right here really quick yeah i was on it actually not too bad there not too bad there and you can see because of that i was able to stick with foul for most of that corner taking a little bit of a shallow line there messing up the person behind me but in fairness i think this was all our first time at least my first time on this track definitely would like to improve a little bit though shouldn't be that hard but it's just one of those things that it is but now we move over to rhythm and flow i think this is definitely a quote classic one of my favorite tracks to drive right behind uh otm mods actually in the lead here we can see the train looking pretty solid again i'm thinking about that transition timing that proximity trying to hold in as close as i can you can see actually in some situations it almost looks a little bit early arguably it is actually a little bit early transition right there a little bit of an awkward transition you can kind of see it in the uh, first person cam maybe even in the wheel cam if you look at that closely a little bit of a of a bumpiness in the wheel just because the car wasn't settled really really well it's kind of forcing it to do what i want and then i've noticed i think right at here if I let off the throttle and then get back on it after the jump, it seems a little bit more smooth. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. But it seems like it was working a little bit better for me. But now we're in the nighttime version of Rhythm and Flow. And also for for some of those of that maybe want to drive night or just like want to test it out, there are some tracks I've seen. I think especially Rhythm and Flow is a little bit of an older one. They don't really have the lighting. I think it's called just like the lighting FX meaning that the light poles and stuff aren't on. So when it's nighttime, it is nighttime. And you can see it is pitch black everywhere else. But here I'm just trying to keep that proximity as I've keep, uh, as I've kept or continue to mention, really working on that transition timing here. And then boom, right there you can see how I'm right in the pocket right after the transition. I think uh, if you really watch for the moments where I'm losing the, the proximity versus the ones that I'm like boom into the door, it'll, it'll start maybe becoming a little bit more evident in what's going on there. But now we switch to Saturday on another, I don't know if it's Colt Classic. I mean, I definitely feel like it's an OG Colt Classic, uh, Lime Rock. And here again, uh, we're on Turbo's, cha well, we're chasing Turbo on his lead, excuse me. And after the Friday session, I want to continue that momentum of my proximity practice. So here I'm just trying to stay with him, not take different lines if I can help it really trying to focus on transitioning right with him i'm looking at his front tire and because he's so consistent and there are other drivers for sure that are as consistent as him i'm really trying to think about what lines he's going to take because he's so predictable i can be a little bit more aggressive with the with the transitions i guess and you can see like there off the throttle a little bit immediately lost him and this is why in my personal opinion i, I like to use drivers like turbo and others who are really consistent a little bit faster because it really tells you immediately what mistake that you're you've made potentially whether that's a little bit too much angle which i think i'm a little bit of guilt a uh, little bit guilty of and then also i noticed i don't know how i'll try to point out if i see it i know i mentioned it last video but i've noticed like i'll throw a little bit of extra angle before a transition it makes it really difficult i think for people following you but also that tends to make you lose a lot of proximity. So if I see it, I'm gonna really try to pay attention. It's hard not to wanna watch the track cam, honestly, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to point it out if I can see it there, a little bit of extra angle, but I've really been actively trying to force myself to think, don't angle, like what can we do here instead of throwing a little bit more angle before a transition? So sometimes I look a little bit more rocky, I would say, but at the same time, I'm just focused really, and maybe even arguably solely, 
on that proximity and just trying to stick with these doors. I think I have a lot more to improve, but I do think watching this back and from this weekend in general, I've seen a, a lot more improvement too, which is great, which is great. But this is the nighttime version of Lime Rock. Again, I'm not sure if many people have seen it. If you've seen the other videos, you've probably seen it before, but uh, you can see me being a little bit aggressive here, trying to stay on his door, making a little bit of mistakes, but trying to clean it up as well. Again, when I see a red arrow behind me, it's sweaty. When I see two red arrows, it's super sweaty. So I try to sometimes in those situations give a little bit more proximity just because I'm not super confident with my own lines. I don't want to mess uh, other people up behind me too. So just trying to stay in the train, trying to follow. You can see a little bit delayed on that transition. But now we move to Brooklyn Park, track that probably had needs no introduction. This track, I think, is definitely growing on me too. It, it always has been one of uh, one of my arguably top tracks. But man, I, I think with trains, it is really fun. By yourself, it's kind of whatever. Even with a tandem, it's kind of whatever. But man, it is really fun to grab big train doors uh, with this track. It, it makes this track so much more enjoyable. But here, let's talk about, again, we're focusing on proximity in our drifts, in our train. We're really looking at here, uh, Reg and what his lines are. But also, I mentioned in our last video, I am looking at our lead driver. So I'm kind of seeing where he's going, what he's doing, and also trying to, I guess, predict what's going on and not be as reactive. Hopefully it's coming across. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but I've been really, in addition to all of this, I know this is a lot of information, but I'm trying to be a, a lot less on my left foot break. We talked about Mihan on those entries, but I think overall as well, trying to be a little bit less on the left foot and working on slowing down the car with the actual throttle exclusively. And I've talked before for those of you that are working on, you know, really like day one or like early days in drifting the biggest thing that you can do is link an entire track with just your throttle no clutch no uh left foot brake no e-brake just straight throttle control will go such a long way and here hopefully you can see and as i'm explaining i'm really using a lot less tools because i'm able to be a lot more confident with my throttle which is then transitioning me into a, a lot better of a position in these drift positions uh, or chase positions, I should say. But here again, trying to match Turbo's uh, speed and angle. Try not to over angle. Trying to match when he's transitioning right here. I know he's going to transition and look at that. I'm in the pocket, right? That's the that feeling I, I can't really explain. But when you hit that pocket, right, it works out so well and it feels so much better and you don't lose all that proximity now we move to a track you guys have seen before but you haven't seen it in this light or lack of light this is shinjuku kart night now again as i mentioned with i think it was rhythm and flow some of these older tracks don't have their lighting fx set up properly so we run day night cycles no matter what the track and here you can see we have fluorescence but we don't have light hitting the ground from the fluorescence so this is actually nighttime Shinjuku car. If you thought this track was scary during the day, uh, try nighttime. I mean, it is it is kind of terrifying, but also like it is helpful, especially for this rooftop area. You don't really get overwhelmed or maybe like nervous about the walls because you just can't see them, right? <laughs> if they're not there, they can't hurt you. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about our proximity because again, that is our focus for this video and my focus for this weekend. Here you can see almost actually hitting a wall. This part, uh, or rather these corners, I'm still struggling with what makes sense for me personally. So can't really say too much. I think there's a lot, uh, there's a little bit of a lack of proximity purely due to the fact because I'm not very confident on this track. Maybe that's obvious just watching it, but here, especially at nighttime, this is our first time running it at like this pitch black nighttime. So just trying to stick with it. I was told also this transition point, the left side of the pillar is the right line. The right side that I took, I think as well as them, is not the right one. If that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what I was told. But now we actually go to a lit garage during the day at Shinjuku. And here, again, we're working on our proximity. It's just me and Reg on this. Uh, there wasn't like a, a ton of like super crazy trains on this track. On Saturday I think a lot of people were kind of worn out by the nighttime which is totally fair 
Uh, but here I'm taking the opportunity to kind of learn how Reg is taking his different lines here. Really focusing on my throttle. I also was testing this for, I think, a little bit too much E-break there. But in the E-break on the outside and helping not uh, tighten in that corner for the train or for trains in general. Here losing a little proximity because of a bad line I took. But again, trying to do my best to be smooth, arguably, but also to stay near Reg's door. He's having a really great lead run. You can see I'm not as consistent as we've seen so far throughout this video. But still trying to keep that proximity a little bit late on the transition, a little bit late on the secondary transition, getting back into his door. And then here he's going to transition now. And there was a little bit too aggressive and early. And I don't think I took into account how he might slow down in that corner. So they're tapping his rear bumper a little bit too much. And then this right here, throwing a little bit too much angle, losing a lot of proximity, really bad line, especially if there's people behind me. That's not really what you want to see inside of a train. And then also, you know, cherry on top, taking the wrong line out of there. It's kind of hard to take that left uh, orientation versus that right one, but I was trying it. Now we move to Villain Sportsland, another one of my personal favorites. Really liked this early... I think this was a sunrise, I want to say. But here I noticed after, like, again, I've just been thinking proximity, proximity, pro proximity. That's all I'm thinking about. I noticed that a lot of these drivers that I've been driving with are not e-braking on the entries, it feels like. It almost feels like they're throwing in the car and then maybe, like, letting off a little bit of the throttle and then getting back on it to not only hold their angle, but to uh, keep that momentum. So let's see right here. I think I was basically e-braking almost every entry. See, so right here, e-brake, not too far off, but a little bit further than I really should be, especially in comparison to the people in front. Trying to take these lines. This is, again, from what I was told, is a replica of Mihan one-to-one, -one, but it's like flipped. And if that's true, it does maybe give you a little bit more room because there's not barriers and stuff around. But you can see the same struggles that I had on Mihan on this track too, a little bit late on my transition. And here we go into the nighttime version of this track. Now this track does have track lights, but I think there's something weird on the transitions uh, for night and day or day and night where it goes a really, uh, really dark, which kind of makes it challenging, man. You're throwing your car into the abyss on these entries. But again, challenging tracks make better drivers. Definitely for me too, you kind of learn skills improve if you let it forage you properly but yeah let's look at this next entry here so a little bit late on these transitions trying to stay next to freshest door in front of me a little bit late there too and that's another thing too i should mention i've noticed especially coming from car x here a little bit better of an entry though by the way look at the proximity of this door but left foot braking was very common if not required on car x especially if you're running 90 adhesion lobbies like i was but in Assetto, and honestly, probably arguably in real life, you're not going to be on your left foot brake on transitions, but I've noticed that that uh, slowness in my transition has also hurt my proximity. So maybe that's a tip to help you guys out a little bit, because that's something that I'm trying to really actively think about and work on. But now we switch to... To boot... Wait, wait. I, I was still going to say this, but I forgot. To... To... to Zukaba? I don't know. Tabuka, Tabuka, Tabuki. Anyway, the Fruits line, I'm still very green at this track. This track, I think a lot of people actually started their AC journey on this track. I really never drove it that much, so I'm still learning a lot of the lines. We have day and nighttime cycles on this one too. And I will tell you, nighttime is terrifying on a tow track, especially if you don't know the corners. And because it is a little bit of a longer track, I don't it, it's hard to memorize it in one hour of driving so i have gotten a little bit better you can see finally tr well not trying but kind of actually keeping a little bit of that proximity on this uphill i think both clips on this are all uphills i didn't really have a ton of footage that i thought would be good for really again our focus which is our our proximity here it would be really cool though to see once i get more familiar with these lines to be able to to hold the drifts i i did or the proximity in drift i should say and i did notice like there was a lot of sections where i was e-braking where i might not need to left of braking a lot of, like right there is a great example of 
me not knowing that this corner or remembering that it's a very big wide sweeper and uh, I ended up e-braking just because I was trying to reorient the car and then went way too slow and got pulled all the way back and you could see immediately that proximity generate uh, from the E46 in front of me but here trying to stay on his door it's crazy the OTM people who are basically born on the mountain no, having no problem of course uh, but us back here just kind of vibing me getting a little bit of doors which was nice especially on this track I think it, it would be really rewarding again once i kind of get the uh, the lines down so I, I don't have any line advice i mean maybe once uh, i level up on this track i can be a little bit more helpful but here just trying to hold that proximity best i can you can see right there i was late on my transition which then effectively made a big proximity gap which again you should be able to see if you start thinking about it as i'm talking as you're watching should be able to start seeing that like oh there it is yep there goes the car oh yep he was left of braking oh yep he took a little bit too big of an angle and then hopefully you can apply that to yourself while you're driving and start recognizing that pattern i think once you know what the issue is it's a lot easier to correct the issue right especially as new drivers or maybe drivers who, who just don't know i've had a lot of people come into the stream and say hey man i just don't know what i'm doing like every time i'm trying to chase or trying to be uh like in a train i'm just like falling back every single corner like i don't know what's going on here's a great example of that in action real time and genuinely i hope this commentary is helpful because these are things that i'm starting to think of actively while i'm driving and, and it, again i would argue i think it is making a pretty big difference a notable difference for me a noticeable difference for me uh enough to say like okay yeah now i'm starting to get it and now i'm starting to apply other techniques to try to resolve those issues that i'm having so here again not knowing the track <laughs> same place well i don't think it's the same corner you can see already my track knowledge is is pretty rough but just trying to keep up with them not really doing any phenomenal lines or anything great on the proximity but just really trying to keep up trying to learn the flow once i think it's more muscle memory of oh i know what corner this is and i start having those mental land uh landmarks of where those corners are and how to take them i think i'll be a lot better in this track i think that's true for a lot of tracks but definitely ones that you're not able to see every single corner from a mile away it's uh it's a lot more helpful and also if you if you guys have comfy maps i didn't know about that i installed that for this track depending on how it's set up shout out to uh turbo for giving me these but there are teleport areas you can use only if you have comfy maps you can't use it for uh uh for like your normal map which i've been running this whole time but that right now brings us to again bhs old drift tree track now just as a reminder we vote on these every hour to rotate it keep it fresh keep it entertaining keep it fun for everyone so we can drive tracks that maybe people don't love and then we can switch to tracks that maybe people do at the end of the day you know it's up to everyone in the stream to kind of vote for what they're interested in or suggest tracks and I think it's been a net positive, but yeah, again, this track is something that I really enjoyed. Really like fun to just kind of get doors. It's a very flowy. I think I've mentioned it a, a few times now, but it seems like I gravitate more towards these like big, high speed, flowy tracks. And uh, yeah, here we are again, man. Really, I, I I can't I can't help but say shout out to BHS for this one for sure. I genuinely really like this track. So now we switch over to Shadow Valley. Now, here again, we're thinking about proximity. I did want to show off or showcase some of the the weather slash night day cycle. You can see a very, very nice looking, if not a gorgeous looking skybox with the, uh, I think it's a sunset right now. But right there, you can see a little bit late, a little bit too far forward actually which then caused me to pull back, which then caused me to be late on the transition, which then caused me to lose all that proximity. This is a track that is definitely pretty tame now that I've driven it quite a bit. I feel like I have a lot of my Assetto hours into this track. So with a track that you know and you're really familiar with, if you feel really confident with your lines, it's a great time to really focus on that proximity. And also I think this is actually Sunrise, so my bad. Still looks great though, still looks great. But yeah, here's just trying to look at his door, stay close to him. Here you want to kind of extend this drift without making too much adjustments. Lon's doing a great job in the lead with that. Actually, didn't even look like he made an adjustment there. 
late on the transition, was able to keep proximity. But you can see someone behind me, maybe not necessarily because of me, but it doesn't help for sure. And this is what I talk about. Being a good train member means that you're fluid. That really, like, if you uh, had the other two cars disconnect in front of you, you're, the way you're driving hasn't wouldn't really change all that much. It, I'm not sure if that makes sense. Basically, I'm just saying you should be in the middle of a train. You need to be a good lead, and you need to be a good chase at the same time, right? And that's kind of the focus. So if I make a mistake, if especially if there's like five, six people behind me, I make a mistake, I slow down, I tap it in a weird spot. All of a sudden, everyone else kind of bunches up, and it's all all over because I made a simple mistake, which is kind of why I think trains help uh, level you up a little bit faster. But here we're on a chase with turbo. Uh, and again, really was focusing on my proximity as best as I could. You can see a little bit more throttle work, a little bit too much uh, changes in my throttle though, looking at the track cam and P3 kind of having to adjust because of my changes. Here, really thinking about his transitions, get a little caught on the bumper on the rear, so my transition was a little bit slow. But here you can see me throwing a little bit angle, and then I try to resist it and and uh, transition on time with turbo. Really trying to stay next to his door as close as possible. A little bit late on that transition there too. And now we switch to good old Takamaki. Now, I didn't realize it uh, when we were driving, but holy man, there was some crazy runs actually this video took longer than i meant to because i kind of got caught up in just uh looking for these situations but then i started seeing like all these different uh i, I don't want to say situations but different uh people driving and all these trains and it i was like oh man this clip is so cool all oh, this clip is so cool so i needed to probably work on that a little bit but shout out to you guys like you guys are making uh, it really difficult to find clips that I think will be good for uh, just uh, having these type of conversations for. But now let's talk about our proximity. So we're in P3. About We're about to switch to a new lap. So now we are in P4. We have two people behind us, to my knowledge right now. Okay, there's the two. So now we have two red arrows in front and behind. I'm trying to follow their lines, trying to stay near his door. Losing a little proximity there. Trying to keep it smooth. Try not to left foot brake a little bit if I can help it. And then a little bit late on the transition, but trying to keep that proximity. You can see that my car slash the wheel was fighting me there a little bit. A little bit late on the transition too, but I was also pretty far away from the prox. And then here, try not to scoot in too much. But there, I think I kind of hesitated. Maybe pulled a little bit far back. And you could probably see maybe in the uh, first person cam a little bit of a tap. Saying, hey man, it's a little bit slow there, dude. But yeah, that... Those, there were some crazy runs in this. I wish I could even include more. I'm trying really hard to reduce the length of these videos, but it, it's hard. And it's so enjoyable just to rewatch these. But now we're back to U.S. Airway. I think we were U.S. Air Raceway, excuse me. Which hopefully you guys see a little bit of improvement from our last commentary video. I've been really thinking about the proximity again as we keep discussing. But with this, this was a track that... I was not super comfortable with. You can see, I think I look a little bit more comfortable, a little bit less e, uh, left foot brake, sorry, e braking everywhere, and really trying to trust the car, especially that blind uh, uphill to downhill, knowing where that section is, losing a little bit of proximity here. And then here, you get a lot of speed. You can pull the e brake a little bit, get you in a good angle. And then it seems like it sets you up pretty well without going too slow on the rest of it to stay with whoever might be in front of you. This is technically, from what I understand, the intermediate section of the track. I don't even think I spent any time, actually, on the uh, beginner course. I really wanted to try to get this track down a little bit and get a little bit better on a challenging uh, track with my proximity, too. But here is another... I think it's a couple runs, actually, from this. Just because it's a really short back-and-forth lapse on this. I'm trying to stay close a little bit wide on the line trying to pull it in here you can see making a little bit of mistake but trying to recorrect trying to match the angle best as i can clutch kicking a little bit to try to keep my wheel speed up getting a little bit of proximity pulled and then here thinking about that downhill to left and then to right and uh, i think i just positioned it weird which is why you saw again another big proximity gap generate a little bit there 
and then here's our final lap so downhill transition e-brake a little bit trying to follow that line putting out on those inside corners in front of me a little bit tighter than i think i was expecting and i wasn't really angled for the correct spot but keeping the proximity as best i can i was going to say running the wall but i don't think it's really that close a little bit late on the transition and there you can kind of see it too like a cascading issue right sometimes you make a mistake and it just gets worse and worse it happens man it happens but you can either recover it or kind of reset and restart over but now we are on wow i can't believe it our final track for this weekend back to rhythm and flow i mean we ended friday on this track we ended saturday on this track but definitely like this is just such a fun hot lapping track it's hard uh not to love it but yeah this was actually a great track for me another track that i'm a little or feel a little bit more familiar slash confident with you can see the insane length of that train a little bit of a mistake from the middle and, and myself included had a little bit of bunching i think some people reset because they they got a little stuff there but here trying to stay close to the door and then i've been really trying to match how they take these everyone seems to take it a little bit different i've been seeing if i can take it without an e-brake with an e-brake i think you can do it without it uh and then definitely for proximity's sake and also you know if you see on the track cam some cars disappearing it's set to only show up a certain amount of cars so you know that there's a lot of cars in the train when there's cars that are uh just disappearing and reappearing it's kind of obnoxious but really for like uh performance it's kind of necessary but i mean yeah this train is looking insane i'd go a little bit too shallow there i have a little bit of a tap from the person behind me trying to keep up with them as best as i can trying to be on that transition timing as best as i can too but a, but a little bit late there too over the hill looking at how they're entering and then trying to match it they look like they're going pretty fast i had a pretty stable angle so i didn't need a break and yeah man i think this is the last lap last uh little section of this video but hey man thank you guys all so much for watching those of you that have been coming from the youtube videos thanks for being in the server it's great to see you guys i hope to see you this weekend hope your week went by fast and until then boys i'll see you sideways later